Lifetime Achievement Award. And I said, we can't do it. My life isn't over yet. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we do. Here we go. I've lost connection to one of the pages, but that's okay. It's 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 one of the, my smaller ones. So here we go. Go live. Come on, come on. Okay, it's asking me to reconnect. And is it going to? It's not, and it won't let me go live because, okay, oh, I can edit it. Hold on, let me remove. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now we'll be able to do it. Or maybe we are live right now. Oh, we're live. <laughs> we're live. Hi, you guys. Sorry, I was doing a little bit of tech stuff on live. Bill, thank you. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hi, everybody. I am, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, I am Liz Dawn from Celebrate Your Life Events. And I'm so, so blessed and honored to be here today with the amazing Greg Braden, five-time New York Times bestseller, five times New York Times bestselling author, which is a massive, massive achievement. Um, before we get started today, I, um, and Greg and I have talked about this, we just wanna take a moment if you all could um, just join us in a peace prayer for what's happening in the world right now and sending love. If we just place our hands on our hearts, take a breath. Let's just take a moment. Just take a moment of stillness. Placing your hands on your heart, taking a breath and sending love support and peace to all, all over the globe, to those who are hurting in pain. And let's visualize peace, just visualize everyone dropping into a place of forgiveness, of compassion, of kindness for humanity, for all of the brothers and sisters around the world, because we know we know in our community, we know that we are all one, no matter what, we are all connected. We are one. And let us see all of us holding the intention for peace. Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for holding that holding that in our hearts right now. And so it is. Thank you. Hello. Peace. It starts with the world. It starts with us. It starts with the light workers. So let's get on with our conversation because we are going to talk to Greg Braden about all kinds of fun and juicy things and find out what he's been up to and what's hot in his mind. So we know, Greg, that you are the man of resilience. You are the man that we go to, the leader, the spiritual leader that we go to, to blend science and spirituality. So how about sharing with us a little bit res about resilience, a little bit about moving through challenging times, and what's on your mind lately? That's a big topic I just gave you. <laughs> it is. It is. Well, Liz, first, I just want to say welcome to everyone that's joining us today. And Liz, I want to thank you for the opportunity to, uh, for you and I to be with our community in, in the way that we are right now. And I, I think it was important to acknowledge as we enter into our time together today, that this is no ordinary time on the face of the earth. It's no ordinary time in our lives. So thank you for acknowledging that in, in the very kind way that you did. And I, I'm just going to, to add to that as we're sending that love and that peace to the world, it's really important to offer it to ourselves as well, mm. because no one is immune from what's happening. We are the witnesses. And in witnessing the events of our lives and, and the world, even, even before this weekend, what we know is we're living a time of extremes. That's no secret. These are extremes of converging cycles of everything, social cycles, conflict cycles are converging right now. 
uh, climate cycles, economic cycles. They're all converging. And the scientists know this. Our ancestors were not scientific, but they understood rhythms of nature. And for 40 years, we've been talking about this, this time in, in history, uh, what it would mean to us. And now we're in it. And, you know, the only way out of it is to go through it. We have to go through what it is that has, has been ignited uh, on our planet. And again, even before this, this weekend, this last weekend, we're, we're in a process right now. So I think it's important to acknowledge to ourselves that it is no ordinary time in the history of our world. And, you know, a lot of young people don't know that, Liz, because, because all they know is the world that we have now. They don't have the context for what has happened before they came into this world. Uh, the relative peace and the stability and the cooperation and the peace that we that we have had in uh, in the world. So uh, I think it's important to acknowledge all of those things. So uh, I am 48 hours uh, stateside from a series of events that I've done out of this country. Uh, a little jet lagged, not bad, but, but just a little. <laughs> my, my, my body doesn't know what time zone I'm on. So you got me at a good time. <laughs> You're still in that time zone. Oops, where am I fog? Excellent. Yeah, but you know what I want to say? And I want to say this to our community that's watching today. It's, it's so easy to feel that we're isolated in our social media silos, as we call them, uh, the echo chambers that are feeding us through the algorithms precisely what it is that we want to hear. And in those silos, often we are not privileged to have an honest and objective view of what's happening in the world. Uh, and I, I want our community to know that I have been with large audiences uh, in South America and, and throughout Europe, and that we are not alone, and that people all over the world are coming together. Uh, we were just, I was with Bruce Lipton, my dear, dear friend, Bruce, spiritual hey. brother, colleague Bruce Lipton, <laughs> We were at a, a beautiful, a beautiful theater stadium seating in Rimini, Italy, and some some of the people watching today were with us. There were exactly yeah, we, there were. Getting, we, by the way, we're seeing all of your comments, you guys, and I'm seeing they, how grateful they were for you to be in Rimini. So well, yeah. well, we had we had a thousand seats, and we had a thousand souls that filled those seats. And I've got to tell you, Liz, they were so our community from 44 different countries converged in Remini, and they were so dedicated to what was happening, they were with us from beginning to end. They weren't in and out during the day, and they didn't taper off toward the end of the program. They were there, and I, I was just in London this last weekend, the International Conference on Consciousness and Human Evolution, the annual conference. It was the same thing, exactly a thousand seats, and people from all over the world converged on, uh, on this conference in London. And they are so open and so willing to embrace the beautiful good news of the new possibilities. And it was an hour, I mean, literally an hour before I went on stage, the news broke out of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And we uh, may have been one of the first conferences because of the time zones. We're ahead of eight hours, seven hours ahead of, of the U.S. Right. To, uh, to really try to wrap our hearts and our minds around what it is that, that is happening, that happened then, that, that's happening now. So you asked me a number of questions, Liz, right. as, as we came into this. We are all in this one way or another. We are all influenced. We are all affected. And I think the question that we have to ask ourselves, we can't necessarily change what's happening or what has already happened in the world. We definitely can determine how we respond to what happens in the world. And we are all being challenged as individuals communities, uh, colleges, universities, uh, as nations, as a planet. How do we respond to the atrocities that we're all being exposed to, that uh, our bodies are not really made, our nervous systems are not made to, to embrace what it is that we're seeing and what we're told is happening. So what we do is we have to get through our day and we try to adapt to it. We try to, to make sense out of the senseless. And for some people, it means stuffing the emotions. 
Uh, for some people, it, it means uh, taking a stance that uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense in, in the world, but it helps them with their nervous system. The beauty of the human body is that we can adapt to anything to get through the trauma. And we are all being traumatized. This is a global trauma that we're seeing right now. And some people are influenced more than others. We can adapt to get through the trauma unless we deal with that trauma. Honestly, truthfully, objectively, uh, it's going to show up in our relationships. It's going to show up in our health. It's going to show up in our lives uh, at some point down the road. It could be a near future. Or it could be it could be months or years from now. And so I think it's important that we acknowledge that we are being traumatized through what's happening because because we are not, I'm just, I'm, I'm hesitating because we just started this, this conversation. You know, the ancient Essenes in their writings that were recovered early in the 20th century, Invincible they, there, <laughs> there, there's a statement in the Essene text that comes to me almost on a daily basis. And what the Essenes say is the only difference between the angels in heaven and the angels that walk this earth is that the angels in heaven know that they are angels. And what that invites us to embrace is that we are angelic beings. We don't know it. And we are not prepared typically to, to deal with, with what it is that's happening in the world. So we have to find a way to heal our nervous systems, to heal our emotions, to heal our, our psyche. What a lot of people don't know, Liz, this is one of those places where science and spirituality come together in, mm -hmm. in a really beautiful way. Mm -hmm. For every emotion that we experience, good, bad, right, wrong, joyous, ecstasy, and, and deep, deep suffering, makes no difference. Every one of those emotions creates a chemical in our body. It's called a neuropeptide. And those neuropeptides, those chemicals, they want to metabolize and move through our bodies when we're in trauma, we clamp down, our bodies contract. And unless we have the tools to process those neuropeptides, they stay with us for as long as it takes okay. for us to come to terms with what has happened. Okay. So when we witness what we are now witnessing as a global civilization, a couple of things we need to ask ourselves, one, when we act, when we choose to act, do we act from the fear of what happens if we do not act a certain way, or do we act from the love of what we know in our hearts is possible? And the question is, what do we allow the events of the world to make us become? What do we become in the presence of those events? Now, a lot of our our viewers know there was a, a, a time in my life where I was blessed, privileged, and, and really lucky to lead groups into the, the monasteries, the highlands of central China and Tibet. It's no longer permitted now. I, I can't take my groups there. But we used to go to 12 monasteries and two nunneries over a 26-day period, up, yes. uh, just below 18,000 feet above sea level. It, it was a, a truly a, 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 a magnificent pilgrimage. And I would speak through the, the translators because my Tibetan is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really bad. Uh, so we would go through the translators and talk to the monks and talk to the nuns and the abbots of the, the monasteries about life mm -hmm. uh, in, in their world, in our world. And one of the first things that a beautiful abbot said to me, I think applies to every one of us in our lives today. When we ask, what will we become in the presence of the atrocities that we're seeing in the world today? What will we allow those atrocities to make us into? What the abbot said to me, he said, the deeper the hurt and the suffering that we experience in the world, and he was speaking firsthand because of what they had gone through Right. Uh, and, and their genocide. Mm -hmm. He said, the deeper the hurt, the deeper the suffering that we experience, and think about this, it means 
we have to go even deeper into our hearts to find the magnitude of love to transcend that hurt. So when we experience the deepest hurts and the greatest suffering, the loss of loved ones, of freedoms, of ways of life, the loss of bodies, the loss of health, whatever that is for us, one of the, the byproducts of that suffering is, is a catalyst and we have a choice. Everyone has a choice. We have a choice to succumb to the darkness of the hurt, or we may choose to allow that darkness to be the catalyst that propels us to an even deeper level of love, to find our deepest capacity of love so that we can transcend, we can overcome what it is that we have been faced with. And when I think of that on a daily basis, uh, and I, I do my best to apply it on a daily basis, and it's it, even knowing that, Liz, it's still difficult. I've been crying since Saturday for my friends, my Palestinian friends that I'm hearing from on, on my, I'm texting them personally, my Israeli friends yeah. that, that are in fear uh, yeah. for, for their lives, for their nations, for their way of life. And, and that is what's happening now today. But before this ever happened, this principle applies to everything that's happening in the world. We're, right. we're living a time of extremes. And so we are presented with this opportunity to go deep within ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, to find the capacity of our personal love. And it's different for everyone to transcend what it is that is hurting us so deeply. And that's very different than discounting it, than being angry, than, uh, you know, there, there are people all over the world that are protesting in anger today because they don't know what else to do. They don't I know what else to do. I do have, um, there, there is a question because I, I am, I'm sure that everyone, we're all on the same page and we've got a question from, from, okay. I'm going to show the question on the screen. I'm just going to begin. I didn't know yeah. we were going to start with this question. So this is, unscripted. I know, I know. This I know. is unscripted, <laughs> unprepared. I don't have any so notes. We were, we were I, I don't, something different I don't even have a PowerPoint presentation. So. I know. <laughs> Well, here's a question All right. from Barbara Nyman, and it's very real and very raw. How does one act when someone is telling and yelling at me that I should be killed? I deserve to die because I was born Jewish. Sure. So how do we, that, it's a great question, Barb, Barbara. Um, I thought you were going to say more. I thought you were going to say. I thought you were going to say more, Liz. I'm sorry. I didn't. I wanted to honor. No, 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 no. I guess. I guess the question, and and I understand where Barbara's coming from as well. You know, as a Jewish woman, it is. It is hard. Um, so I'm going to take that one, and then can you take that one? Can yeah, I try? Yeah. Uh, no, get, no, get a yes, shot at yes. So, um, for me. I drop in, I do drop into fear and I do drop into anger and hurt and like, what are we going to live through? You know, Nazi, what happened in Nazi Germany, not only to the Jews, but to anyone who was gypsy, anyone who was a homosexual, anyone who was protecting the Jews, um, anyone of a different skin, you know, people of color. So there is that immediate, you know, fear and anger on a higher level. And I really just got here during this conversation. I truly just got here during, and, and Greg is Jewish also. Um, I got to this higher perspective of, and I'm not saying I'll be able to stay here, of that we are all one, that the ones that are spewing the hate, the ones that are screaming for the death of a certain religious for for jews for for people of color whatever it is is i have to see them as as also perfect love beings i have to do that because i know that's truly who they are in essence we are all just one and they are acting out of ego they are acting out of their anger minds they are not acting out of the truth of who they are 
And that's how I get to soften my heart and keep sending forgiveness, keep sending love, keep sending love, keep sending love. Because if I continue to send hate and anger, that's what's going to be perpetuated. Okay, Greg, please. <laughs> Well, yes. Uh, thank you, thank you for that, Liz. I mean, there there are multiple. Hear your, your perspective, Liz. Can you can you flash that question up one more time? Because I yes, want to honor. Absolutely. I want to honor that question precisely. Okay. And, and uh, when someone is okay, thank you. Um, there are multiple layers to this. I, I like you, Liz. We grew up in fear when we were kids. I was born long enough ago, it was not that long at the, after the end of World War II. And my family denied their heritage, uh, changed their customs, changed their religion, changed their names, changed their locations uh, to protect us because part, members of our family were lost. They were killed uh, in the Holocaust. So uh, my, and, and uh, it's in my DNA and it's in your DNA and it's in our, our global DNA. The question that you asked me initially, Liz, was how do we deal with it personally? So when someone is saying something like that to us personally, and I, I've had that experience as well, I can't change what's happening with that person. I can only determine how I respond to that, that person's uh, what that person is saying to me, that person's desire to end my life. I can only respond for, for myself. So, so I'm going to start at that level and then we're going to work our way up. On that level, do I allow that person, do I give my power away to that person's view of me to the point where I will hurt myself, make myself sick uh, uh, by carrying the, the stress hormones day in and day out that actually deprive me from the deepest expression of my humanness. Well, I allow that person to, to take that from me. And that's a personal choice. We all have to, to answer that yes or no, right or wrong. That person, those people that have those sentiments, what I know is this, and I've met them. I've met them personally. There's a lot of hurt in the world right now, deep hurt among people who have never have yet to discover the tools to resolve their hurt. So there is deep hurt with no resolution. That hurt then is expressed as fear and the fear becomes the hate that we see in the world. So when you see extraordinary levels of hate, what you're actually seeing is extraordinary levels of, of hurt, unresolved hurt. Now, it doesn't change what happens. It doesn't condone. People have asked me uh, about fighting back against those things. I'm a man of peace, and most of you know that I'm a man of peace. There are times when we, there are windows of time when we can take advantage of that peace and we can change a situation, what some people call timelines. We can actually uh, diverge timelines by acting upon peace in, in a window of time, once that window has passed, and I think we're in that right now, there was a period of time where we had all the opportunities, and, and we did as a spiritual community, as a global community. I believe that we took the rough edges off of what could be much, much worse as we go through this cycle in time. When we cross that point, there are times we have to fight. There are times that you have to fight, but here's the key. Here's the key. Do you fight from the hate in your heart that you've given your power away to because you're afraid of what happens if you don't? Or do you fight from the love in your heart for what you know is possible in your life and in your world? And I think this is a powerful difference because the question is, what have we allowed this situation to turn us into? What have we allowed ourselves to become in the presence of the hurt and of the hate? We all know World War II, we yes. had to fight. If we had not fought, we would be living in a different world than we live in today. We're living in a polarity of light and dark. And there's a battle between light and dark that has been going on from our since our, our origin. 
That battle is rearing its ugly head right now, and we're in it. The only way out of it is to go through it. But what do we become? And we'll, we'll go through it. We have to. But right. what do we become? What are we at when this battle is mm -hmm. over? Mm -hmm. And this is where the personal evolution, the personal spiritual development, really, our mastery, our personal mastery really comes into play uh, in terms of, of where we are with this. Now, and, and I know I, I'm going to turn this over to you in a minute, Liz. People are going to ask, how do we do that? And I want to address that. I, I actually I'll, was going to ask you the same thing. So and I'm, I I'm, I'm going to pause because I just said, I said a lot and I want to honor you, Liz. And, and well, I just, I want to share, first of all, we've got over 500 people here gathered. We've got over 500 people here in this, in this conversation. And I am so, so grateful for each one of you showing up and sticking around for this conversation and listening. Greg, what you are saying is so exquisite. I'm like goosebumps. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that we don't get to, because when we're in this higher place of love, it doesn't necessarily mean that you stop doing those things to support whatever it is you're choosing to support in a way through love, in a way through explaining to people in a way that's 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 peaceful and resonates for your soul and not having your energy be depleted okay take it away greg again <laughs> well it's i mean this is um this is a it's a big question and it's a big conversation to have in a few brief moments on facebook live and i don't know that we can even really do justice to the question because there's so many nuances Right. My goal today and what, again, I didn't know we were going to have this conversation. There's another part of this that we're going to talk about. And right. I'm and happy I'll, I'll I'm do ha that after you answer the question. No, okay. I, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have the conversation because it's up for us right now. It's up for us. And I think it would be disingenuous if we didn't acknowledge that it's up for us. Yeah. There's a lot of hurt in the world, unresolved hurt that is now being expressed is hate. And that hate is being directed at different groups. Right now, we're talking about what's happening in the Middle East. At other times, it's against different colors of skin or different sexual preferences. The hate uh, is being directed in, in a, a lot of different places. No one has the right to take from another individual their lives, their freedom, their children, their uh, sovereignty. No one has the right to do that. And there are times when everything else has failed, but we have to fight. That's our warrior. We all have an inner warrior. And, and it, it means different things to different people. To fight, there are different ways of, of fighting. But we have to ask ourselves, are we worth the fight? Is our humanness, this is what's really happening, and this is what we're going to talk about. There's a battle playing out, yes, between light and dark. Yes, a battle for our thoughts. Yes, a battle for our beliefs. We all know that. There's a deeper battle for our very humanness. And the effort to dehumanize us through technology, through artificial intelligence, through blurring the lines between male and female, blurring the lines between adult and child, blurring the lines between biology and technology. All of that is dehumanizing uh, on, on some level. And what we're seeing, the, the hate that we're seeing now is only possible because of that dehumanization. When you do to another person what is being depicted in the social media right now, you couldn't do that to someone you saw as human. You have to see them as less than human. That This is the battle for our very humanness. So we're going to go through this. And the, the question is, can we go through it as individuals in a healthy way, uh, in a way that allows our spiritual evolution and allows our hearts to become the best version of ourselves rather than succumbing to the fear and the anger and the hurt and the darkness and living our, our lives uh, with that hurt and that anger defining every moment of our lives. Will we be defined by the events unfolding in the world? That's a choice. And that's a choice we all have in our lives. So one of the ways, one of the techniques that helps us we all know the brain. Our brain is a polarity organ. You got a left brain, a right brain. We talk about that all the time. Uh, when we interpret and when we respond to the events of the world through our brain, here's what happens. 
The brain will always see good and bad, right and wrong, success and failure, worthy, not worthy, and our relationships and our jobs and our careers and our health and our body image in the events playing out in the Middle East right now. This is why our ancestors very wisely encouraged us and left us the tools to view the world through perceptions, not in the brain, but through the heart. Because the heart is not a polarity organ. It was only in 1991 that scientists discovered our heart has its own neural network, just like the brain, but it's independent of the brain. The heart thinks, feels, remembers, and interprets life differently from the cranial brain. So when we go into our hearts and, and take in the information, not bouncing back between the ego loops of polarity, but when our heart is able to see what's happening from what is called the single eye of the heart, when we can see that, it doesn't change what happens. It definitely changes the way we feel about what happens. And it helps us to begin the healing process to release those neuropeptides so that they can metabolize through our bodies. And here's how you know when that's happening. When your neuropeptides are metabolizing, Liz, often you get, you get a taste in your mouth. It's like a metallic. You get a dry mouth and you'll get a metallic taste in your mouth. Those are literally trace metals that are bound up in the neuropeptides that are now metabolizing, they will metabolize through all of our body fluids, through tears, through saliva, through breath, through urine, through perspiration. Uh, any body fluids will carry these. So you're, when you urinate, it may smell different. People in our workshops do this all the time. They say, my pee smells funny. <laughs> and, and this is like after you eat asparagus, you, and that's a perfect example. You know, within an hour of eating asparagus, you can, the, the uh, amino acids, asparagine, is uh, very present. And it's the same with, with these neuropeptides. So when we train ourselves, and this is a level of mastery, to, to drop into our hearts and take in the information through our hearts rather than our brain, our heart is going to see this for the truth of what is, and it is not going to go through those ego loops. And that empowers us to, to find resilience, healthy resilience to what it is that we are faced with. Ancient warriors were taught this all the time. If, if, they, were, if they were going into war, the ancient martial artist, when I was in Tibet, the martial artist in Tibet, if they would face their opponents because they were afraid of their opponent or they were angry with their opponent, they gave their power away. They would drop into their heart center to become the best version of right. themselves. And this is... Yeah. This is what I think is, is up for all of us right now. The way we win the battle. How do you win the battle between good and evil? The battle for our humanness. You live the best version of yourself. And Liz, I'm going to use a word that's going to open the door to the next part of this conversation. Everything that I'm talking about falls under the umbrella of what is called divinity. There is a battle for our divinity. Now, what does that mean? Many people link divinity with religion. If you look at the definition of divinity, this is so beautiful. Divinity is the ability to transcend accepted human limits. That's all it is. The ability to transcend, to become more than limits. And those limits may not even be real. Accepted limits. They're the accepted limits that we've accepted for ourselves because of our programming. So when we talk about divinity, uh, and Liz, we're going to talk about a workshop and divinity and things, things yeah, like no, that. I, I just I want to, I'm sorry, please go ahead. Well, I, I just want to say divinity is the part of ourselves that is timeless. It is ageless. It is our deep intuition. It's our imagination. It's our creativity. These are all facets of divinity. And when we are able to embrace what the world is showing us, whatever life is brought to our doorstep, doesn't change the world. It changes us. When we were able to do this and without giving our power away to the event, that is us embracing our divinity. That's how you win the battle for our humanness. Because 
Our divinity can only be expressed through this body. So there is, there is a battle to fuse our bodies with technology, artificial intelligence, computer chips, chemicals in the, in the blood, sensors under the skin. You all know that. Yeah. Uh, and that battle, that battle is to, to steal away our, to steal away the very essence of what gives us our humanness and that is our divinity. So I want to say that Liz, and, and I apologize. I just want no, to be no, a, no, have no, a complete no. thought. Because I, I, hundred percent agree. And that's, I just want to share with all of you because now we're almost up to over 600 people. This is what the conversation is about. Um, I ha I've made a choice in removing some political conversations that are going on in the chat because this is not about politics. This is not mm -hmm. about taking sides. This is not about anything. Greg Braden, if you are familiar with his work and if you are familiar with the work that we do at Celebrate Your Life events is not a political conversation of right or wrong or this or that. This is about staying in our hearts and how do we move through these, the resilience. I mean, Greg just said it. <laughs> I, I am not a spiritual leader. I just bring the spiritual leader. Yes, you are, life. because I saw you on a stage a couple of weeks ago. You are a oh. spiritual leader <laughs> and you did oh, a beautiful the, job. The Women's Forum. That was pretty, yeah. I have yeah. to tell you about that. Anyway. So um, I do want to share something with all of you that um, we have created as a collaboration, which I'm extremely excited about. This is the first time. Um, so I'm sorry. I, I'm, I need to monitor these reviews right now, uh, the messages. I apologize um, for just taking a pause. This is this is not. So, Liz, Liz, I don't know what I don't know what I'm not seeing what yeah. you're seeing. Are you Let's see the comments the way I can? So I'm just... Okay. Well, so you know, to, uh, you asked me specifically about how we personally perceive and deal with these things in in a healthy way, uh, and it, it doesn't mean that we that we don't uh, that we don't fight in some ways. I think right. sometimes you know we have to. The right. question is what do we become in the presence of that fight? That's, that's what we're asking. And I've, I've spoken to my friends in the military who ask themselves the same question. This is a deep, deep question. Uh, friends in uh, special forces and uh, Navy SEALs, what do I become in the presence of my mission? And when we see evil in the world, I think it's important to, we have to stand uh, Absolutely. To, Absolutely. To, to those things. And, and we do that in our everyday lives. We have to do that in our everyday lives. The question is, how do we go about doing that? And I think that's the conversation right. that we're having now. Right, right, exactly. I want to um, I want to segue here for a moment. So, for the first time, we have come together in a really wonderful and powerful collaboration with Greg Braden, with Dr. Bruce Lipton, with. Anita Morjani, and I think you all know who these teachers are, with Shamani Jane. And it was really the vision of the four spiritual leaders who came together and said, we want to create an event, a retreat, a space for people to come and learn about open hearts, a learn, learning about the resilient spirit and sort of step away from our everyday lives and be in that cocooned energy. And they came to me and I was so deeply honored. I actually cried on the phone when they called me <laughs> and said, Liz, Greg said, Liz, we want you to put this program together for us in person. So we are doing this beautiful program called open hearts, resilient spirit with the four of them. And it will take place. Here's, I'm going to post the URL in the comments and I'm going to share screen for a moment. So you can all see, so you can all take a look at the event that we are doing in Scottsdale, Arizona next year. So it's perfect timing for all of you to prepare for this. And it is with, as you see, Bruce Lipton, Shamani Jane, Anita Morjani, and the fabulous Greg Braden. 
it is going to be an extraordinary convergence of all of these four world renowned spiritual visionaries to come together for an amazing retreat. So you can get all the information on that link that I sent you. You can see the link right up here in the URL and we would love for all of you to join us. It is a beautiful time for all of us to come together in unity, in peace, in a time where we need to be together in as, as, as community. Um, Jason, no, this is not Christian based. This is spiritually based. If you know anything about um, Greg's work, it is blending science and spirituality. We're going to have very, very similar conversations in terms of of how to connect to your divinity, how to be resilient, how to take all of the things that have been going on with us individually and celebrate our, our own divinity. So yeah, that's, yes, it was a little commercial break for, <laughs> for the program that we are doing. Yes. So that is um, the program that we're doing in January. And Greg, I, I just think I speak for everyone. Please go ahead. <laughs> I just I just want to just speak a little bit to the program. You know, uh, first of all, Bruce Lipton and I have known one another since before we had books. So I think we just celebrated our 30, 30 year anniversary of, of knowing it. we were presenting programs without books. And somebody one day said, hey, you guys should write a book. And we said, OK, so so we did. I mean, it didn't it wasn't exactly that way, but you get the idea. Uh, and Anita and Shamini and Bruce and I are all dear friends and colleagues. We travel tremendously. We rarely get to work together. And it was during COVID where we really connected and felt that there are a lot of good teachers and a lot of good programs in the world. And we felt that many of those were falling short on a, a deep, a fundamental level, uh, how we see ourselves in the presence of the world. You can have the most advanced meditations and you can have the most advanced nutrients, and you can go to some of the most beautiful sacred sites in the world. And if at the very core of your being, you are shredded, tattered, uh, and feel defeated, those of you know exactly what I mean. If, if you're dealing with deep depression, with panic, with anxiety, uh, it's very difficult to get into some of those meditative states when your body when your your physiology is is not being addressed and so we we felt like there there is a way to bring together the wisdom the best science of the modern world and the wisdom of our ancestors you know liz you read a question is christian about christian based you know christianity is based in the essene traditions yeah. the essenes and the the people that we look to in uh in our most cherished and ancient spiritual texts emerged from those Essene traditions. And we do uh, access those, those traditions from a, a very, very uh, powerful uh, basis. I, I can't speak for those speakers. I will from, from my, my perspective. So my portion of this, Liz, and you and I haven't had this, what I'm going to bring to the table is this conversation of our divinity. How do we know? what our divinity looks like, what veils our divinity uh, and keeps us from that in our, in our daily lives. And when we embrace our divinity, we, it frees us to become the best version of ourselves on every level. And that is actually a deeply spiritual process. And that is how we win this battle between light and dark that wants to keep us from our divine expression on, on this planet. So, uh, so Bruce and Shamini and Anita and I, we, we don't do this often. Our schedules don't allow it, but we wanted to put this together. It's a, Liz, do we agree on four days? I just want to honor that. Did we say four days <laughs> because we, we talked about a lot, of, a lot of days I've been out of the country and I haven't been in on the conversation, but so it goes, uh, it starts yeah. on, Oh, Oh, now I have to look at it again because I, I we're doing several programs. So it starts on a Friday. It starts on January 26th and we start in the afternoon and we go through Monday, um, January 29th. And one of the things I love about being, you know, for those of you who don't know me, I've been doing live, I've been 
sort of a creator, a curator, a, an event producer for 28 years. I and know. a really, a really good one, a really good one. I just, I have to interject a really good one. Thank you. And all of our programs are about bringing people who are spiritual seekers into a soul tribe community in a safe and nurturing space in order to learn and grow. And um, again, I've been doing this for 28 years. And the one reason why I keep doing what I do because sometimes it's, 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 we're a small business doing mighty fine, you know, programs. I keep doing what I do because I get to see the transformation that happens in the space. Mm -hmm. I get to see people who come from all over the world who are nervous to come alone, or they've never been to a program like this before. And at the end of the program, you know, we're hugging and holding each other. And that's why I do what I do because I love the um, celebration of humanity. I love, it, it's a love fest. I love the souls coming together as one, no matter what our other beliefs might be in the world, we come together in a spiritual community. And that's what, that's what happens in the space at every single program. I can honestly say this at every single program we've been doing for the last 28 years. And Greg has been, we've been working together for, Oh my goodness, since 2002, you've been coming to our Celebrate Your Life events. So oh. um, consider coming to join us. We've got payment plans. Um, the tickets are on sale right now. We've done a rock bottom price on one of the levels of tickets. So again, I'm going, I'm going to post that, that URL for all of you. And those of you who have been to my events, you know, <laughs> you all know how wild they can get and it's just a big joy fest and, and community. And I think there's something very palpable that happens. I mean, I, I love that we have the availability to do online programs and there is nothing like being together, you know, face to face, heart to heart. So if, if this resonates for you, come join us, come be with us and you'll be surrounded by like-minded souls and people. And what I love about this program, and this is something that, that all four spiritual leaders insisted on is that they're doing a ton of panel conversations during the four days. So there's going to be the availability to ask them questions. So Greg, do you want to share anything else about it? Well, you know, thank you, Liz, for, for everything that you're doing. And, and, um, you know, we all, all the speakers have been doing this work for a long time. We've all seen different conference models come and go. We wanted to go beyond the model where people come and they just sit in the audience and you get one speaker and then another speaker and then everybody takes notes. It is what it is. It can be good. And it's good for some kinds of conferences. We want to do something beyond that. And that's why we, we want to interact among ourselves. And we also want to interact with, with our community uh, and have the community interact in, in the ways that, that they will. So it is a very interactive program. It is a love fest, but you know, it's love based on, on what's real. Mm -hmm. uh, three out of the four of us are scientists. Shamani is, uh, is an MD and uh, Bruce and I are both, uh, are both scientists. He's a life scientist. I'm an earth scientist with a, a background life sciences. So we're bringing to bear new discoveries that just aren't making it into the mainstream. They're not being taught in the classrooms and the textbooks. They change the way we think of ourselves and what our capacities and what our capabilities are. And they marry beautifully with our most ancient and cherished indigenous and spiritual traditions. Uh, in many cases, not 100%, but in many cases, they actually help us understand why those ancient traditions, why the mantras, why the prayer, why the meditation, why the daily practice, why the shift in thinking, why heart access, why it works the way it works. So it's based on something that's real. And once we see that, it helps us to know what works and we can do more of and what doesn't work. And we can not put our, our time and energy into things that, that may not be effective. And I think we owe it to ourselves uh, to, to be the best version of ourselves for what the world is bringing to our doorstep, Liz. So I, I really, and have a lot of fun doing it. You I know, know. I, I, was a, I was a musician long before I was ever an author. And you know, if I'm in an event, we're going to have some 
some really good music, world-class musicians that we will bring in that are yet to be announced, and uh, and some some musical surprises among the guests themselves. So, oh. yeah, oh. so it'll be a lot of fun. So thank you, Liz. I'm I'm looking forward. Very excited to do this. It's right around the corner. I know, I know. January, <laughs> we're in October already. I know, I know. Yes. So I hope that you have all enjoyed this conversation and possibly um, received some love and peace in your hearts to navigate what's been happening in the world. And um, again, if the retreat resonates for you, we'd love to see and meet you in person. We'd love to meet you in person, heart to heart. So, um, oh, Dorit. Dorit is from Israel. I know Dorit. Give Dorit my love. Well, I can do it. Dorit, my love to you and, and your family. <laughs> Oh, and Thomas, I, I'm seeing all of you. Bill Van Horn is here and Tammy's here. Ginny's here. I just want to acknowledge all of you that have been here. Ginny's here, Georgian, Bill, Dorit, Thomas, Dana, Tammy, Mina, Kathy, Joni. Thank you all. Stephanie, Elizabeth, and for, oh, love from Switzerland. Oh, that's beautiful. I just want to acknowledge all of you yeah. for um, tuning in and, and hanging out with us this afternoon. All right. We are sending you all so much love and embracing our soul family. Oh, Krista. Okay. I, I could go on and on, right? <laughs> so much love to all of you. Okay. Stay right there, Greg. <laughs>